Ah, so bored. Hey, check out what I found on the other side of the- Oh shit, Brock, are you alright? Holy crap! Come check this out, guys! I just found Pepsi! The heck is a Pepsi? I have no idea! Isn't that awesome? Hey, didn't the foreign guy say this would happen? He is the messiah! I'm alright, guys. Don't worry about me. Ow, 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 ow. Looking into Earth's World War II history, I came across a rather weird part of it. An American soldier who went from an average guy to the messiah himself. In 1941, after Japan bombed Pearl Harbor, the US officially entered World War II. While the bulk of their battles took place in Europe, the Pacific Theater also had its fair share of battles. And since there are only really small islands in between the US and Japan, most of the battles took place on the sea, in the air, or on the remote, untouched Pacific Islands. Like the island in Lost? Shh, we don't talk about that one. You see, since the 1910s, many powerful nations had explored and set up bases on the small islands that now make up Solomon Islands, Vanuatu, and others. One of these islands was Tena. In addition to this, missionaries, explorers, and others came to convert the islanders to Christianity, colonize, and use the island's resources. So I think we'll just set up a gift shop here, and maybe the resort will go over there. Um, what about us? What are we getting out of- Go read this. Have fun! With the missionaries setting up shop on the island, a clash of cultures emerged between the converts and those that stuck to their traditional values. But the religion of John Frum offered a different solution. John from where? No, no, his name was John Frum, an American soldier. Like many religions in the galaxy, the specifics around the origins are uh, murky and highly debated. Supposedly, he appeared on Tana around 1940. The theories of his appearance range from a white man walking out of the sea to another islander embodying his persona. Some believe he came as a tiger and some in a dream. Anthropologists believe that John Frum came to the island, seeing if it would be a good place to set up a military base. He was a white man, walking along the sea. He was a tiger, crouching low in the jungle. No, he came to me in a dream, and looked just like me. <sighs> okay, who gave Pa to the natives this time? While the theories of how he first appeared vary widely, his arrival marked the beginning of one of the most well-known cargo cults on planet Earth. A cult? Like, CrossFit? Yeah, a cargo cult isn't really a cult, but more of a religion. Oh, so it is like CrossFit. Specifically, it's a belief system wherein followers perform rituals which they believe will cause a more advanced society to deliver goods. And what does John Frum have to do with that? You see, as divides grew between the new Christians and the traditional islanders, the religion of John Frum offered a third idea. New traditions that resulted in actual goods. Leave the missions and follow me. You'll be rewarded with great goods. Eh, why not? In 1941, thousands of islanders started rejecting colonization and retreating into the wilderness, all on the basis of one of the elders' supposed conversations with the spirit of John Frum. Supposed? Isn't history supposed to be something that either happened or not? The people of Tana, similar to older civilizations like the Vikings, aren't known for precise record keeping. Plus, while history and religion are normally intertwined, it's a bit more complicated than that. <laughs> like the plot in Lost? That show ended like 11 years ago, you gotta let it go. Never! <laughs> so, people have their own motives, and while it is generally thought that John Frum was real, him telling the villagers to abandon the new westerner way of life and follow him seems more like something a frustrated islander might say to attract followers. Hell yeah! Reject modernity, return to monkey! So, wait, they just used John Frum as an excuse to revert to their traditions? It started that way, yes, but it became a religion all on its own. I go to new places all the time, and no one names a religion after me. What makes him special? Well, like a prophet, he did foretell the islanders that a group of Americans would arrive, bringing new technology with them. I spy, with my little eye, giant metal monsters swimming and flying to this very island. Pfft, look at this dude. That's never gonna happen. Holy Jesus, what is that? Uh, Most of these islands were inhabited by people that had never been exposed to the modern world. They lived secluded lives that involved utilizing resources found only on the island or in the surrounding waters. 
until the military arrived with planes and jeeps. That sounds like the ultimate culture shock. So much shock that they could not actually comprehend. While many humans by this time would take something like a ballpoint pen for granted, to many of these islanders, it represented something bizarre and so foreign it couldn't be the work of a human. This is a pen. Dear God. There's more. No. You can write words with it? But where did it come from? Well, it was made in a factory. The heavens? No. I think Delaware. What's a Delaware? I get it. Human technology is really bizarre. You guys seen a blender? Honestly, what a perfect piece of technology. You see, if technology is shown to you that is beyond your wildest expectations, it's only natural to assume that it might be from something supernatural. Like ghosts? Or in this case, gods. Dude, I just saw a guy saw a boat in half and he glued it back together with tape. The hell is tape? I don't know, but we gotta get in on this. They're obviously getting premium stuff from the gods. The Islanders, curious about how the Americans became worthy of all this great stuff from the gods, started carefully watching the movements of the soldiers. Hup, 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 hup. The Islanders believe the military drills the American men performed must be a form of worship for the gods. This idea was then intensified when cargo packages started falling from the sky. The Islanders did what seemed obvious at that point. Hup, 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 hup. And when the war eventually ended, the Americans packed up and left, taking all their technology with them. Oh, so it ended like that? Not even close. The Islanders doubled down on their rituals, even forming the Tana Army, a nonviolent group that trained and prepared as the Americans had. They even painted USA on their backs when performing the rituals. Wait, are they hoping for more goods to this day? Well, the religion of John Frum wasn't completely about getting Western goods dropped on the island. It was about the hope of a better life and future, something the spirit of John Frum promised in 1941. Oh, so they still celebrate that guy? Yep. Each year on February 15th, the island celebrates John Frum Day, where they throw a big parade and all the men participate in the military rituals. John Frum represents what Tana can become to the people that live there, a thriving place to live. Hey Jeff, tomorrow's John Frum Day. Remember to bring the family. You bet I will. Tomorrow is little Tommy's first time doing the drills. Hup, 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 hup. Even though they know that such technology isn't from the gods, they're still an extremely poor nation. And while they have some access to modern goods, it's not like it's falling out of the sky like before. So they believed if they were faithful, they'd be rewarded. Yep, it's the same basic guiding principle of every religion. But can't others easily prove their rituals wouldn't work? Prove to whom? To them? They believed it once and they turned out to be right. Why would they think it wouldn't happen again? When you believe in something and it comes true even just once, it'd be hard to convince you otherwise. Confirmation bias, as humans call it. <laughs> like Mr. Fancy Pants over here who always wears dirty socks before a Martians game. I mean, it's nice to have something to believe in. It sure is. And like Lost, the religion of John Frum will continue to have its devotees long after it's relevant. Hey guys, it's me. That is the video for today. And we're experimenting a lot with these videos. We're trying some accents, <laughs> avoiding other accents. So just let us know in the comments what works, what you think doesn't work, what you'd like to see in the future. And I'll see you next time. Bye.